Hi everybody, my name is Cisco Scaramuza alongside with Drew Adamson, and today we are proud to announce what is going to be a huge benefit for a lot of drivers out there on the sim. We are adding the ability to mess with the spec maps on the cars. What does that mean, Drew? That means Matt and Chrome. They're finally here. Drew, tell us a little bit more. How, how do we get there? Well, thank you, Cisco. The first thing, of course, we're going to have to do is we're going to have to log into the member's website. And we're going to have to download the template for a car. So to, for today, we're going to use the Gen 6 Camaro. And once you've downloaded that file, you're going to open it. And relatively, it looks very similar to those who have painted before. But one of the biggest differences now is there's a third folder included. Previously, we've had the paintable and turn off before exporting folders. We now have the custom spec map. So as we flick it on and flick it off, you see these crazy blue and pink and teal colors. And what that does is that actually tells the sim whether or not it's going to be chrome, whether it's going to be matte. But more importantly, the terms we're going to use today is metallic and roughness. So, Drew, but what am I going to do if I have a paint already? And for all the drivers out there who have paints, I mean, that's great. You can build the new paint with the new files, but how do we build it onto our old paints? The first thing we're going to do is deconstruct the paint so that we can get it ready to apply the metallic and roughness settings that we're going to want. And so in front of us, I have my personal paint that I like to run with. And this can go for anybody else who's done their paints. We're just going to use this one to help explain how to get to the metallic and roughness. So Drew, I already have my paint. A lot of people already have their established paints on iRacing. So how are we gonna get that to this next step, essentially? So one of the first things we're gonna do in getting our paints here ready for metallic and roughness is we're gonna deconstruct it based on what we've done previously. I already know what I want for my settings, so that's why it's gonna go a little bit quicker. For most painters, this is gonna be a fun experiment to figure out kind of what kind of material you want the car to look like. Do you want a little bit more roughness? Do you want a little bit more reflectivity? There's a lot of variety here that's gonna be open to our members. And that's what's so cool about this, is the uniqueness and personalization that they're gonna be able to do with their cars. So this is essentially a setting that would be able to give you all kinds of different, almost textures to the car in a way. You know, whether it's more of a glossy finish or more of a satin or even a matte or a, a super chromey car. Exactly. And for the customization that will start to show off a little bit, it'll make a lot more sense when we show it in the sim and how it's being reflected upon what we're doing here. So one of the first things we're going to do, actually, is I was using one of the metallic layers that was created by the community on the Camaro here. So I'm going to open up the folder here, and I call this Scheme Shark, just because I like sharks. And I have two folders for metallic layers, and we're actually going to turn those off, because unfortunately, from all the hard work that came from the metallic layers, I'm not going to say that they're not necessary, because you could still very much use them. You don't have to create a spec map as a member. So if you still want to run the metallic layers and don't want to really want to dive into this, that's perfectly fine. You know, that's what's great about iRacing is the customization and personalization that you can do to your cars. So we're just going to go ahead and turn those off. So now the next thing I want to do is I actually just want to isolate the paint scheme itself. That means I'm going to turn off the numbers, I'm going to turn off the stickers, the logos, all that stuff. So now I'm going to just turn that stuff off. So now that we have this, what we're actually going to start doing now is building our spec map folder. Now, as we showed previously in the actual new templates you guys will be downloading from the site, the spec map folders are included. But for those who want to actually just take their paint PSDs and build a spec map into it, that's what we're going to do here. You can do either method, it's more about user preference on that, but I might as well just show you as well how to build a spec folder from scratch. So what we're just going to do here is we're just going to create a new folder. And I'm just going to call this Camaro Spec Map. Then I'm going to create two other folders. One called Metallic and one called Roughness. Make sure you actually put these in the Camaro Spec Map folder. Next, we're actually going to create a new layer and we're going to paint it white. And I'm going to open up the settings here just in case. And once we paint it white, 
what we're going to call this is blue. At the end, this will make a lot more sense. We're just getting this all ready. Now for the Camaro here, I'm not planning on changing any of the alpha layers. What I'm going to do is go to the new template and I'm going to take the alpha layer out of that new folder and I'm just going to duplicate it onto my paint and I'm going to stick it in our new folder. So the reason I'm copying the alpha layer from the template and moving it onto my paint and I'm not touching it is because the alpha layer is actually used in the spec map to symbolize things that we don't want the light to react to. So in this case what this does is on the gear shifter is it gives it the illusion that there's not holes but divots in it. And no matter what happens in the scene in the sim, light does not affect it whatsoever. So you can add multiple things to the alpha layer. But for this purpose, I'm just going to leave the gear shifter alone. But that's what the alpha layer does. Is it? It's basically the layer that you don't want light to affect at all. All right, so the first thing we're going to work with here is the metallics. And we're going to use grayscale here to help identify that. And with the image you now see on your screen, you're going to understand what we mean by that. Generally, what you want to do is do a just a plain one on this scale or a zero on the scale. So either pure white or all black. So for most of the car, we're just going to use white or black. However, for the A pillars, I have a gradient going there because for me, I'm going to do something to that. So essentially what we're actually going to do here is everything that you see blue and white, we're going to turn chrome. And everything that you see black is going to end up matte in the final product. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to identify all those layers as white. And to do that, we're actually going to make a duplicate of our paint scheme here. And we're going to put it in the metallic folder. So for this first step, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off the gradient layers because we're going to get to that here in a second. The next thing I'm going to do is I have all these color fill opacities and you know blending effects on these. So what I'm actually going to do now is just rasterize all those. So for those of you who don't have the base color of your car black already, because as I mentioned before, I'm actually going to make the black, I'm going to turn that into matte. But for those of you who may have orange or yellow or red or whatever color, I'm going to show you how to actually change it into what we're doing. So real quick, what I'm going to do is actually change my car from black to another color to help identify how to transfer it into what we're about to do. to turn all the layers that we want into the proper colors here, what we're gonna do is use our grayscale. So for everything for me that is rear spoiler all the way down to what I labeled as secondary, and of course you guys can label your paint layers however you want, we're gonna highlight all those. The next step is actually we're gonna lock these, but we're not gonna use the traditional lock that most people would think. So we're actually gonna go to the top here and we're going to use this lock transparent pixels. And that means for the individual layers, we're going to lock everything you see on there. Now that we've got these locked, what we're actually going to do is color them using our grayscale. And then each of these layers that we want to be reflective, we're going to turn white. So the keyboard combination for that is alt delete. And as you can see, as we go down the row here, all of these layers are turning white. So for the base of the car, which is the main body for me, we want it to be black. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our little color picker. We're going to hit this little double arrow and it's going to flip the foreground and the background. So now black is the foreground and we're going to go to our base here and we're going to hit alt delete. Now we should have this black and white image. 
And what this does in our metallics is again identify how metallic something is. This doesn't 100% identify how chrome it is or chrome itself. This just identifies to our PBR rendering in the sim how metallic something is. Alright, so now we want to get to the gradients on the A pillars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my blue to white. Now we have finished our metallics. Well, Drew, my biggest thing was, couldn't you just black and white this entire image? Why'd you have to go through it this step? Unfortunately, in Photoshop, if you just try to black and white it, it doesn't actually get it to the way you want. And again, based on our scale that we are now displaying on the screen again for you, you want to make sure that you have it representing exactly how you want it. And again, you can do it anywhere between 0 and 1 on this scale, which is 0 to 255 on the RGB method in Photoshop. Okay, that's fair enough. So, I guess I'm curious, what is the roughness going to do here? Is roughness going to add texture, or what does that do exactly for us? So roughness is actually going to define almost everything, and that's what's really cool. Not that metallic isn't important, because it's a very, very important step. But the roughness is where we get to actually explore how we want the car to look. And so again, we're going to use the grayscale. And now based on the image that we're displaying, the top row is because we have our metallic on, you can actually see if we add complete roughness, which is white on the grayscale, that's what it'll end up looking like. If we have no roughness in an area, that's what it'll end up looking like. And then the bottom row is, is if you decide to go with the more black end or zero that's what it'll look like as you move about the scale of roughness so as you can see we have a lot of options here and a lot of leeway so the next thing we have to do to get started with roughness now that we've been able to fantasize about what we want this to look like is we do have to make another copy of the body And once you got that in the roughness folder, go ahead and turn off the metallic folder. So, for us, as you saw with all the blue and white, we wanted that to be metallic. So we're kind of looking for that more chromey, shiny look. So for us, actually, on this scale, it's going to be more towards the darker end because we want the material to be smoother. And so on the roughness scale, the more dark it is on the gray scale, the more smooth it is. And the more light it is on the gray scale, the more rough it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the base color of the car. And we're going to go to about, let's say, 65% on the gray scale. So I'm just going to change the color on my color overlay here. And I'm actually going to use the hue, saturation, and brightness for this because I want to get it closer to what you see on the scale between 0.6 and 0.7. So I'm going to type in 65%. And you can see that on the RGB scale that we'll be using, is it's 166. Then we're going to rasterize that layer. We're again going to turn off the gradients now as we're just going to focus on all of the other colors. And once again, we need to group, we need to create smart objects and rasterize layers to make sure everything is as flat as possible. Now, for this, we want it to be more shiny, more chrome. So I think what we're going to aim for is, oh, let's go for the sort of 15th percentile. So we're going to open up our color picker, and we're going to choose 15%, which will be in between those two pickers there. We're going to lock all these with the transparent pixels. 
And then we're going to hit Alt Backspace again. And we're going to color all these the roughness that we want. So what we're actually identifying, and I understand it's a little confusing because on one scale you see very metallic, and then on the other, at the same end of the spectrum, on the lighter side, you see almost no reflection. And that's because I want to reiterate to you guys, metallics and roughness are two different scales. So for us, what you see now, the very sort of light gray is an area that is very, very rough. And what you see with the dark gray is an area that is very, very smooth. Now for the gradients. To create the effect that we're looking for, where you sort of have that blend, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lighter color, which is the body, sort of that gray, and then the darker gray to resemble the two areas of different roughness. And that way, what happens is, is when we actually apply this, we get that nice transition from sort of chromey to matty. So now we've actually got our roughness done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to close that folder and we're going to turn the metallics on, the blue and the alpha back on. Now we're actually going to identify the different channels these use. So in this spec map, our red channel is going to be our metallics. Our green channel is going to be the roughness. And currently we don't use the blue channel. And then the alpha channel is its alpha channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click in the area to the right of the name so that it opens up the blending options. And sort of in the middle of the screen there under advanced blending, you have channels. And what we're going to do for metallics is turn off the green and the blue. And what you're going to see happen is is all of a sudden you see this sort of weird teal and red mix. And that, what that's doing is that means it's actually starting to work. Now we're going to go down to roughness. We're going to do the same thing. But as I mentioned before, roughness is the green channel. So we're going to turn off red and blue. And because we have the blue on right now, what we actually have to do is point that to the blue channel. And there we go. So now we actually have our spec map. So what's going to be fun is we can now go load this into the sim. So to save this, what we're going to do is we're going to turn off our paint folder, which in my case is called shark. And all we have is the spec map. So we want to save the spec map to our folder. So that way it reflects on the car. So to do that, you hit save as. You're going to change it to a Targa file into your paint folder, into the car, and we're actually going to label this car underscore spec underscore user ID. And you save it just like a paint, 24 bits, and compress it. So previously, this is what the car looked like in Sim. Now I'm going to hit refresh and you're going to see the spec map applied. So now that we're back in Photoshop, we're actually going to adjust this. And a quick way to actually visualize this stuff, you do have some channels here, our red, green, and blue. And this is only just for visual purposes. What we're actually going to do to edit this, unfortunately, because if you try to click on any of the layers, it'll switch you back into RGB mode. We're going to turn off our metallics. We're going to turn off our blue and we're going to turn off the alpha. And now what you see is actually a bunch of green. Now, don't confuse this with you just being able to paint green all over the place and expect it to understand that's what it is okay that's painting in RGB we have to use grayscale and then point the grayscale to RGB so to view the grayscale again we just go back to the roughness open up the blending options 
and turn on the red and the blue channels again. Now we can see our grays from our grayscale and we can adjust. We had it at about 65. Why don't we try 50? Okay, rasterize the layer. With the gray change though, you'll notice that the gradients also need to be changed. So what I'm going to do first though, is change the other areas that we indicated as metallic to the gray that I want it to now become, and then we'll change the gradients. My advice is with gradients, do them last, because you may want to figure out exactly what you want, in my case, the nose and the body to look like. So I'm going to go in here to my color picker, and we felt that was a little too chromey. So let's go to 25%. And now I'm going to use our Alt Backspace on all those layers to quickly paint those over. And now what we can do is adjust the gradient. Now that we've got that done, what we're going to do is we're going to close our folder again. We're going to open up our blending options and reconnect that to the green channel. It is very important that if you edit something, you make sure you reconnect it to the proper channel. Then we're going to turn on our metallic, our blue, and our alpha back on. And then we're going to save it again. And as we go back to the sim, here's what the changes look like. So, we got a little bit more light appearing on the rear fender of the car, and the nose is actually starting to look more like a cool hybrid blend between metallics and a matte. For now, why don't we stick with that, because that was the easy part. Well, hold on, Drew. What, what about car numbers and, like, sponsor contingencies? Can I do those? Can I make those chrome and matte however I want as well? Could I do like a uh, Davy Allison number? So to answer that multi-part question, yes, you can, and that's what we're going to walk through next. However, there are some intricate details and complexities to this, and to further elaborate, we have the ability to actually make numbers also chrome or matte. If you have a custom number on the spec map and you go into an official race that spec map will show up on the car and for an example look at the sim here you can see that we spec map the number 82 but we have the number 14 on the car so when you're designing these spec maps something you need to keep in mind is if you want to run an official race that whatever you have spec mapped will be shown. So if you spec map 007 and yet you are number one in the official race, number one will show up, but the spec map for 007 will still appear. And then vice versa, if you don't have a spec map for a custom number, whatever you have on the side of the car is what the number will be. However, for what I want to do with my scheme, I want sort of more that default sticker look. So yes, we have sort of the chrome and matte appearance of the car, but now I want it to look like that we've applied a sticker to it. And so the default sort of setting for in-sim stickers or numbers in this case is actually on the metallic, we're going to set to zero. And for the roughness, we set it to 37 on the grayscale. So, the first step, of course, is to make copies of the car numbers. So, I'm going to turn on my car numbers here. And then I'm going to make two other copies of it. So, again, as a disclaimer, you don't have to custom spec map your number. Whatever 
the car is spec mapped in the area where the number goes is how the number will appear. So now that we've duplicated both of our cars numbers, we're going to drag one to the metallics and one to the roughness. Now you'll see they turned out a little interesting and that's because again to adjust them properly we have to grayscale them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlink our channels here and I'm going to turn them all back on. And what this allows us to do is just better visualize what we're doing. There's a couple ways you can approach this. Do you want just the whole number sticker to appear one way? Or in my case, where I have blue as the roof number, do I want the blue on the roof number to appear chrome, but the rest of the numbers to appear matte? Those are things you now need to take into consideration in planning with this stuff, because as we did with the car body, you have to individually map those. So, for our sake here, I want all my numbers to look like stickers that we apply to a matte and chrome car. So, what we're going to do is we're going to change all of the numbers on here for metallics to black. And we need to make sure we convert our smart object here, because I created my number files as a smart object. And we're going to rasterize it. And if you remember on the scale here, we're at zero, or all black. For roughness, you see that the numbers are the same again. More of that iRacing default look is what I'm going for. So we're going to open this, and we're going to color overlay it. But not black, we're going to type 37 in the red channel, in the green channel, and the blue channel. And we get sort of this darker gray. Now, again, based on our scale here, and now we're working with the bottom row, the non-metallic row, it'll be closer to this 0.4 pillar here, but a little bit in between 0.3 and 0.4. So now we got the numbers on the car. What we're going to do is relink our channels. So for roughness, of course, it's going to be green. Now, here's the thing that I will demonstrate to you guys as I mentioned this earlier and I'll give you another visual cue. I just spec map this areas for the car numbers. If I don't apply them to my paint, as you can see here, if I turn them off, it will spec map out the area of the car. So watch this when I save the spec map into the sim, what it does to the side of the car. And on that side, if you remember, it's very sort of matte looking. Now that we're in sim here, watch right under the window net there what happens. So you can actually see I have that area carved out now for the number. So as I mentioned previously, if I was to roll into an official session with this spec map and I had the number one on my car, the number one would appear but that would still be spec mapped out with the number there. And then on top of that, however the car is spec mapped, so let's say the number one goes a little bit above between where I've spec mapped that out and the window net, that little tiny part up there will actually be matted out. So let me go to the paint now and apply the number. So let's quickly refresh. And now we have the number on the car. And look at that. It looks like we've applied a sticker decal. I think it's a pretty cool effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the default contingencies here. We're also going to take my team logo and we're going to apply it to the hood. And it will work very, very similar to how numbers work. So now that I've got all these detailed stickers on here, you can actually also customize those. So what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to go for that more default sort of look. Like we're applying stickers off a sticker sheet. Again. You guys can create whatever you want here. You can go super chrome, super matte, brush metal, all that kind of stuff. So it's all about experimenting and finding what you want. So for me, what I'm going to do is I honestly want all these to look relatively identical and the same. So I'm just going to create one big group here and one big smart object. And we're going to 
rasterize the layer and then we're going to duplicate it twice. I'm going to turn this first one on the top just to black. We're going to do a color overlay and then we're going to rasterize the layer style and then I'm going to drop that into the metallics folder. Then I'm going to take the second one and we know we want that sort of default 37 look so I'm going to go into the RGB and change it to 37s. Rasterize that layer and then drop that into the roughness. Now as you can see we have something that looks like this. This identifies the paint, the decals, the numbers, everything. So what's going to be cool is the final product. And now we go from this to that. So we got our stickers, we got our logos, we got our name, we got our number, we got our series banner. Our race car is ready to go. Well, it's, it makes the car look fantastic, I'll tell you that much, Drew. But with that, guys, we're going to wrap things up here. So for Drew and for myself, we'll see you next time and uh, hopefully a part two of this when we, uh, when we get more down the line.